Let's go, let's go into the studio. It's good to be back home. And yes, Kendall Mountain Run. Woo, we are in recovery mode now, resting up. There's the bib number from yesterday's race in Silverton, Colorado. All right, remember this day about three months ago. There you go. That was wrapping up the last training block, the first training block of 2020. But then this happened. I need to block out uh, some of these negative thoughts about, okay, the race that I registered for, well, I guess two months ago is now postponed. I should say it's not canceled yet. Postponed though, it might as well in my mind be canceled because I live so far away. More canceled races as everyone, all the runners around the world experienced in March. Well, really February, March, April, and May. But then I was like, you know what? It's time to go all in on FKTs in 2020 because I said this in I think it was the December 31st, 2019 vlog. Okay, goal number two. I wanna do three FKTs on 14ers here in Colorado. So Mount Princeton, Mount Princeton, Mount Elbert, and then a third one that is undecided. If you have any ideas for me, let me know down in the comments. So there you go, FKTs in 2020. It's turned out to be the year of the FKTs, frankly, because of everything happening around the world. Okay, let's get to the focus of the vlog. How I am becoming a faster runner in 2020. How is it actually happening? What are the details? Uh, and, you know, based on analyzing the, the training plan over the last three months, especially, uh, but even into leading up into the what was going to be the Hamburg Marathon, what eventually became the DGR Virtual Marathon. And let me just make very clear, it's not just about becoming a faster runner, right? Like that's that's a, it's, it's more, that's almost like more of a, a, a side benefit. Like it's fun to run faster, but um, there's so many other goals out there that we runners can be chasing down. Oh, you know, overall general health. And I mean, you know, physically, anatomically, but also mentally, right? Um, another goal, you know, fulfillment in our lives, um, finding a purpose to our daily living, uh, seeking out community through our running. Like that could be a huge, huge goal, um, especially in 2020. You know, that was part of the reason I think, you know, my brother and I had such a, um, I guess, a, you know, kind of a yearning to get down to Silverton this past weekend just to be around other uh, people that are kind of, uh, I don't want to say crazy enough to go run up a mountain, but crazy enough to go run up a mountain and, you know, just like get out there and experience uh, the beautiful nature. And what is the biggest confirmation for me that I'm actually getting faster? And it's, it was made very, very clear in the past three months in this last training block, okay? It has to be. I was just thinking back to everything that's happened in the last three months with uh, sharing my running journey with all of you. It's been quite a journey. I, I, I think it has to be this because it was only eight months ago that I made my last FKT attempt on Mount Elbert, the tallest, the highest peak in Colorado. Okay, there's the elevation on your screen, like 14,400 and some change. And, you know, it was last September 2019 that I ran 109. I don't know. I don't remember the second. But it was like it was a 109 time to the top for the ascent. And this year, just last, you know, maybe uh, two, two or three weeks ago, I managed to cut that time by three minutes, okay? Filmed it for all of you, ran in the Innovate x Talon G235s, great day. But that was a, a clear, very clear indication that, okay, something is going in the right direction here. We're not, you know, not getting slower, not staying, you know, at the, you know, not plateauing three minutes over here's again here's the mileage to the top here's the elevation gain on your screen um so to be able to cut three minutes is it's just a good clear analytical affirmation that i am getting faster now i do want to point out that i'm not doing these following action items to get faster in the last three months like i didn't go to the gym because the gym was closed because of the coronavirus okay so i didn't go to the gym um i did not go to the track for interval work Okay, I prioritized FKT work 
over interval work on the track. I don't want that. I want to go to the track. I want to work on that leg turnover, which we'll talk more about in a second. So here's my answer connecting to the title of the vlog. And it was frankly affirmed based on some conversations I've, I've had with other runners uh, as of late. So here we go. Uh, you know, and I haven't obviously been able to test this out in a road marathon yet since New York City, but frankly, since the Amsterdam Marathon, again, because, uh, well, I didn't get to run Houston because of my runner's knee, but then uh, also Hamburg being canceled a fast sea level course. So I'm, I'm focusing a little bit more in my answer right now on mountain running, but a three minute cut is a three minute cut. So here's the deal. Oh man. Um, and again, no interval work. So getting up into the mountains, running fast, chasing FKTs, a little strange, a little unusual. I did not do this leading into the Pikes Peak Ascent as much, a little bit last year, but not nearly as much, okay? So putting forth a solid, hard effort, you know, above, you know, 10,000 feet of elevation, okay? So that is point number one. Chasing these FKTs, I believe, and it's a little bit on the mental side too, is giving me confidence, all right? But also getting the, you know, that aerobic benefits, but also getting the legs used to that burn and finding your red line on the uphill ascents. Just finding that red line and just holding it for as long as you possibly can. Meaning you're like, you're right at that threshold and you're not quite pushing through, but you are really, really close. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two is, and I think it's the more important point, being a mountain runner, but not seeking out 20,000, 30,000. 40,000 feet of vertical gain, let's say in a week. I topped out, I believe it, I mean, I can confirm it on Strava, but about 16,000 feet of vertical gain in one week over the past three months. So I do know of some runners out there that run much more than that. You know, sometimes double the vertical gain over the course of seven days. Now, I think living in Denver, I have a little bit of a, I'm just gonna say, a leg up on the fact that I can seek out a 20, 21, or 22 mile flat course, some to, uh, most of it on dirt actually, uh, from my house in order to do my long run on a flatter course and to keep my turnover uh, at a good clip. So we're talking seven minute, 645, sometimes 630 a mile for a long run, 20 to 22 miles. I think everyone, this is the this is the answer to the to the vlog title is that balancing vertical gain with turnover has been my ticket to running faster in 2020, cutting three minutes off my Mount Elbert ascent. So it's not just about the vertical. It's also about keeping that turnover going. And in addition, this is why I do those running form drills and the plyometrics, just trying to keep that turnover as quick as possible, light on the feet, so that when you are ascending these mountains, you can spring up. You remember, oh, I remember what I said so much in 2019. Don't fight the mountain, float the mountain. Just float it. If you're fighting it, if you're digging, 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 I have found that you tense up and your body and your legs especially, you start to shut down and you get tired and quicker. That, that's been my experience. But if you're light and you don't fight the mountain, you float it, I feel like I can carry my energy further up the mountain, which I believe, yes, was affirmed yesterday at the Kendall Mountain Run by having a pretty solid day, getting the W, uh, running I think just over 138 for the round trip. Uh, one hour to the top with my brother right behind me on my heels. It was an amazing day at Kendall Mountain, despite uh, some carnage along the way. Yes, took a pretty good digger on the way down. Uh, what happened was I clipped my toe on a, I don't know if it was a rock, I don't know. I was going about 520 pace. It did not feel good. Clipped my toe, fell, it was a doozy. But we made it down to the bottom, got to see some other runners again in person, reconnect with the, the running community. It was absolutely Amazing. All right, everyone. Okay. Vlog. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to get to the question of the day right now, and then we're going to get a brief, a brief update from True Love on uh, her success this past week. Okay. So here we go. Question of the day. What has been your number one goal that you have wanted to improve over the last training block or in your current training block? Like, are you focused on mental health? 
Are you focused on eating healthier? Are you focused on running faster? Are you focused on running slower in your long run so that you can run faster in your workouts? Like there's a lot of different ways to become a better runner, you know, simply to train smarter. And so there you have it, a lot of different options for you for the question of the day. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. Again, balancing vertical gain with turnover. That's like, that's my message to you as far as why I believe I'm running faster in 2020. Okay, let's go talk to True Love. Oh, now, hi, True Love. Oh, does this look good? Oh, my, a little sausage. Breakfast for dinner. Okay, everyone, here's the deal. I'm tired. I'm done. Put a fork in me. I am done. Yeah. The road trip yesterday, the race, the fall. Oh. I'm in recovery. I won't show you the knee. It's a little intense right now. So, uh, this week is a little different. So, we're doing Tuesdays with True Love one day early. And I'm gonna put in a title what True Love will do this upcoming week as far as her training. Okay. And I'm literally like going to take a nap or something. Yeah. I'm passing the mic off to True. She's gonna give you an update on how training went this past week. Yeah. All right, and she's gonna close out the block. I am, thanks so, honey. I love you. Love your guts. Love you. My, I'm proud of you. Mwah. Crushing it. He is a V8 engine. He can oh. get three days worth of work done in one day. Uh -huh. Hi YouTube. Making breakfast for dinner and it smells real good. Can I just say today I did 20 minutes straight, straight. And I would say this last week, what I did was I did um, three days of walking and three days of running. Of the three days of running, two of them were the six minute running, two minute walking intervals times five, finishing off with a walk. And then the last day was 20 minutes straight. And two thoughts come to mind. The first is, I can't believe it. I, I've been meaning to do this for like a decade and I am doing it. And it is happening and there's no going back now because this habit has been carved into our lives and it's addicting and it's delicious and I love it. And the second thing is I started stretching maybe four or five weeks ago um, on my run days and I, one of my stretches this week was just fantastic. I felt like I was just more limber and could go deeper and it felt good to stretch. So those are my two updates. And I want to close out the vlog. I'm going to throw it back to yesterday's vlog. I'm sure you all saw it. But if you haven't or pass it on to your friends, husband got the W at Mount Kindle Race. And the views are gorgeous. And then the knee is gruesome. And he's, you know, we always say blood, sweat, and tears. And we mean it. <laughs> Legitimately, blood, sweat, and tears. Um, so go check that out. And seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. We'll see you tomorrow.